Hello, guten tag and guten tag. It is a gorgeous sunny day and I'm on line 5 of the Berlin S-Bahn heading right out to the eastern end of the line and the lakeside town of Strausberg. And I'm here visiting my friend Neve, who is originally from Ireland but now lives in Berlin. And today Neve has made the mistake of allowing me to choose where we're going for an afternoon <laughs> out. So I've chosen Strausberg, partly because it's genuinely a nice place for a trip out from Berlin but also because of this. Okay, admittedly that is just an overhead electric wire and you've all seen one of those before on railways or trams or trolleybuses but this is Europe's last remaining example of an overhead electrified ferry. Wait, when did we ever have those? This is Strausberg, a historic fortified town that stands on the Straussee Lake, 30 kilometers east of Berlin. The old town walls here date right back to the mid-1200s, as do parts of the local church, and famous former residents include Sigmund Jain, the first German in space, who retired and spent the final years of his life here. But the town really developed in the late 1800s with the arrival of the Strausberg Railway, making it a popular day trip and retirement destination for Berliners. And in 1894, the year after the railway opened, a local man decided to launch a ferry service across the lake. This dude, Kaufmann Daniel Gebke. The Strausberger Kaufmann Daniel Gebke. I think Daniel is his name, right? Not Kaufmann. <laughs> I don't know. I like the idea that his name is Kaufmann Daniel Gepke. Turns out his name is not Kaufmann. He may not have been called Kaufmann, but he was a Kaufmann, which translates into English as a businessman. Mr Gepke had seen all the day trippers flooding into Strausberg and saw an opportunity to build a brand new lakeside bathing resort and restaurant. So he did. The only problem was he built it on the other side of the lake, and to get his customers over there, he was going to need a boat. The first Straussee ferry was not electric. In fact, it had to be hauled across the lake by hand using a winch and a rope. But let's fast forward 10 years to 1904, and there is both good and bad news for Mr Gepke. The good news is his lakeside resort has proved so popular with the tourists that he's had to upgrade the original boat to a bigger petrol powered one. The bad news is he's now dead at the age of 61 and his family have sold the ferry to the local authorities. By now, Strasbourg had become quite a desirable place to live, and some of the posher inhabitants had started to complain about all the noise and fumes coming from the boat. Meanwhile, the local fishermen were complaining that it was killing all the fish. So the authorities had to do something, but they didn't really want to lose all the income from the tourists and the ferry. And that's when they came up with a brilliant idea. Why not try running it on electricity? The idea of running a boat on electricity was not new even then. Battery powered boats had been around for about 20 years. For example, this map of the River Thames shows electric charging points in 1889. But Strasbourg didn't want a battery powered boat that would need charging. They had a better idea, and instead, they strung up a live 170 volt electric wire from one side of the lake to the other and then attached the ferry to it using the connector from an early trolley bus. This cable powers a motor on board the boat which then pulls it along a sort of track made out of two more cables. This sort of a cable that runs from the bank here and then, I don't know, does it go through and out the other side? I think you're right, so this cable coming down the side here goes down the side of the boat as well right. and then you can see it coming off the front of the boat going into the water. That's what keeps the boat travelling in the right direction. In other words it works pretty much like a normal cable ferry except the overhead cable is live and the two lower cables complete the electrical circuit which means to a physicist the ferry is both grounded and floating in the water which is confusing and after a few years of testing, a couple of snapped cables, and a bit of help from a little local company in Berlin by the name of Siemens, the town officially launched the world's first overhead wire electric ferry 
in 1915. The boat that you see today is not the original one. This is Steffi, who's been doing the job since 1967. But the point is, Strasbourg has had an overhead electrified ferry for more than a hundred years. Now obviously, overhead electrified ferries wouldn't work everywhere. You can't really put one of these across a busy shipping lane and there have to be strict height limits for all the other boats on the Straussee. But if you've got a ferry that's just doing the same short trip back and forth and there's not really any other traffic to worry about, this isn't a bad idea. The boat never has to stop to recharge or refuel and the water remains clean enough to bathe in. So maybe the question we should be asking is not why did they build this, but why didn't overhead electrified ferries catch on anywhere else? Well actually, they did. A bit. Viewers in Northwest Oregon, statistically there's got to be some of you, may be familiar with the electric ferries that operate on the Willamette River, one at Canby and one at Buena Vista, and there used to be another one in between at Wheatland, but that now runs on diesel. And there used to be another one in Germany too, in a place called Hasmersheim, but that's now been replaced by a bridge. Anyway, if we expand from just ferries and we include other types of boats, there are electrified sections of canal in France, which are used by electric tugboats. In fact, the strauss ferry itself may have been inspired by a similar electric tugboat that was tested on the other side of Berlin between 1903 and 1910. And if we expand from overhead electric wires and we include underwater electric wires, there are also ferries that connect directly to the mains using what are essentially long extension cords including that one in Denmark that half of you know about already because you saw Tom Scott's video about it. And there may be even more examples out there that I haven't mentioned. If you know any more electric boats that use a live wire instead of batteries, then you know what to do. Tell us about them in the comments, starting with the words, well, actually. But if all you want to do is come and travel on what I'm pretty sure is Europe's first and last remaining overhead wire electric ferry, Strasbourg is roughly one hour from central Berlin on the S-Bahn via Line 5, and the ferry is less than a 10 minute walk from the station. A single ticket will cost you €1.70 full fare, or €1.30 for concessions, and the ferry is fully accessible for wheelchairs and pushchairs. There are departures every half hour, and the journey across the lake takes about 5 minutes, while a hike back around the lake should take you about 45 minutes. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.